Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the County Seat. I'm Terry Wood. Today on the County Seat, the County Surveyor. Now, don't touch that dial. I know what you're thinking, but these guys have an interesting job and some interesting stories to tell. We have three county surveyors with us, and imagine if a county line ran right down the middle of your house. It's happened nearby. Or if a county line ran right down the middle of a ski resort. You'll see how it's resolved. We'll tell you some interesting stories in just a moment, but Derek Dowsett has our most interesting story today, what the county surveyor means to you. The right to own and quietly enjoy property is one of the basic principles our country was founded upon. But to differentiate a property from another, there needs to be boundaries. And there needs to be someone to maintain that record into perpetuity. That's where your county surveyor comes in, with their key charge being to maintain the original public land survey system. The public land survey system originated in 1785 when Thomas Jefferson was successful in getting some legislation passed through Congress that established what we now know as the public land survey system, which essentially set up townships, ranges, and sections. A township is a six mile by six mile grid, creating 36 square miles. Each of those square miles within that township is then called a section. The sections are the basis for land title and taxation in the United States. Maintaining the absolute location of the property in a county is closely tied to brass cap monuments set into the ground. They are used by surveyors to measure and describe a particular parcel on a map. In Utah, when the public land survey system was being started, Brigham Young walked out there to the southeast corner of, of Temple Square and and the saying is, this is where we're going to start the surveys for the city of Salt Lake. It's the zero, zero point, basically, for the entire state. The importance of monuments and their maintenance isn't readily apparent until you are conducting a survey and can't find one. When a surveyor has um, difficulty in identifying a property line, the cost of the survey becomes expensive. Real Utah is fairly devoid of the original federal monuments in the land that's being farmed and, and occupied by private citizens. When I moved to northern Utah, I was able to start working under a system that has had perpetuation of monuments, and we had plentiful monuments up here. The, uh, the costs of surveys are a lot less than than we experienced in central Utah. Another interesting situation for county surveyors to watch out for is when a development is split in two by a county boundary, which means half of the property is in one county and half in another. In that area of the county, it's described as being along the drainage of the uh, Ogden River, and which means if you were to pour a bucket of water out on top of the ground, would this group of water flow down into the Cache Valley or would it flow down into the Ogden Valley and, and into the Ogden River or Pineview? And that's how our county boundary is described. Uh, part of the projects and things were, had to be, uh, have some small adjustments to it so that the county line didn't actually split buildings or go through buildings, which becomes a taxing issue. There are many facts and stories about the county surveyor that we could share with you, but they are hard to explain simply. However, it is important to understand the role that the county surveyor plays in your property rights and the taxation process. For the county seat, I'm Derek Dowsett. Thank you, Derek. Derek also told me that the county surveyor was one of the four original elected positions in Utah. And this job actually goes back even further than that. We'll tell you some interesting stories and what the county surveyor does to protect your property rights when we come back. Kanab, base camp for your Southern Utah adventures. in Kanab. Skiing is expensive, right? Well, how about we do something about that? Eagle Point, Southern Utah's premier resort located right outside of Beaver, Utah, is proud to announce $25 lift tickets all season long. 
Ski and Snowboard Utah's newest resort for the lowest price and find out why the point with its family friendly staff and great atmosphere will become your second home. $25 lift passes all season. Go to EaglePointResort.com for eligibility and restrictions. Five lifts, 40 named runs, 1,500 vertical feet, endless possibilities. Eagle Point Resort. I'll ignore this. Compliments of the lady in gold. Hello, trouble. Anything worth doing in this quiet little town? You look like the kind of man that could show a girl a good time. You strike me as the kind of girl that likes a manicure and a massage. How's that for a manicure? I hate golf. I was hoping for something a little more vigorous. Vigorous, I can do. And I thought you'd be riding side saddle. What? Welcome back, everyone. Let me introduce our guests for you today. You may know some of them because in most instances here, you've voted for them one way or another. We'll start down on the far end here and our county surveyors from Uinta County, John Slaw. Welcome, John. Thank you. Ron Whitehead is next to him. Ron is actually the public works director and the county surveyor for Washington County. And next to him, Reed Demon. He's the Salt Lake County surveyor. For the most part, the surveyors are elected. In fact, it was one of the original four elected positions in the counties of Utah. Why is the surveyor elected by the public? If you think about it in terms of when the offices were created, um, the, the four original offices were more or less a recorder, a surveyor, a watermaster was elected, and then you had law enforcement, you had a marshal uh, or a sheriff. And if you think about quality of life and protection for your family and your rights, uh, outside of your family's safety, what more things were important to survival, having a place to show that you own something, the integrity of your property boundaries, having water, mm -hmm. and having law enforcement uh, uh, to protect you and your family. And those things are, are just as important in today's world. And the reason it's, it's an independent office is it can't, it's an office that's funded and totally focused on those protections, mm -hmm. on, the, on the protection of the integrity of property. And um, without that, uh, without the, the service that we provide, everyone's property is, is uh, property rights are somewhat in jeopardy. And uh, as I said earlier, they're threatened, the public land survey system's threatened on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You know, and we do have some county surveyors in, in the state who are appointed. Ron is one of them. And those situations seem to be working very well. I've always felt that it's important that we answer to the people and that happens when we're elected. Well, did you have something? Our county surveyor's position is actually combined with another uh, elected office. It's combined with a commission office, but he is not a licensed surveyor, so they've contracted with myself and the firm I was with to do the work for 15 years, and then they hired me after that and put me on as public works director, and then just appointed me to do the work for the past 12 years, so. Uh, they've got a licensed surveyor in office that can make decisions and has the knowledge and the background to, to deal with those issues rather than just appointing another elected official that really doesn't have any qualifications to do it. So, Which is, all, which is also one of the reasons in Salt Lake County where it's very developed and very popular, a lot of political issues, uh, the, having the independent elected offices serves as a real check and balance in government. It doesn't put too much control in one person's hands. You have an independent focus on specific functions that provide health, safety, and welfare for the public. Are you actually out there with the survey sticks and uh, you know what we always see? And oh yes, uh, but things have changed in, with surveying so much in the past several years. Uh, the, the advent of GPS systems. Uh, when, when I originally started, we were using a an old theodolite and, and, and a chain and plumb bobs, <laughs> much the same as they did years, you know, a hundred years before. And it's advanced from there to where now a lot of our work is, is carried out with the GPS equipment. Uh, Rodden, you're one of the fastest growing counties in the country. Uh, how does this affect your job? 
Uh, it's, it's a lot of keep up work, trying to keep up with the monument system and making sure it's not destroyed or it's, it's referenced so we can put it back where it originally was. We, we still get into the public land survey system and the monument preservation. And when you talk the monuments, you're talking those survey monuments? The survey corners, the brass yeah. cap section corners or aluminum monuments that you see out in there that construction tends to tear out every time they get close. So we want to make sure they're represented back in the ground where they were before. And so we've, we've been ended up being into preservation and restoration and also we're branching out into the uh, GIS mapping, the computer-aided mapping and stuff and all the aerial imagery and make sure it's coordinated the same too. With all the planned unit development down in Washington County, did, does that create special problems? Uh, it does. There's a lot of advanced planning that needs to go into that. You know, how do we get transportation in there? How do we get utilities in there? And They're all tied to this same public land survey system to make sure everything fits where it's supposed to on the ground. Reed, here you are in the largest county in the state, the county surveyor. Uh, what special problems do you run into and what uh, do you have more abilities because it is such a, not personally, but your staff, because it is such a large county? Yes, we have a, a large tax base in Salt Lake County, so obviously there's more funding to do more. And, uh, uh, you know, we're very developed in Salt Lake County. And uh, if trying to monitor the activity of 16 cities all doing different things, the public land survey system is really threatened on a daily basis. With road construction in Salt Lake County, the public land survey system is mostly in roadways and right-of-ways. And so with all the utility work, uh, all the development, it's threatened on a daily basis. So I, I have to partner with the cities and we work together a lot of do a lot of collaborative projects and protecting the public land survey system in Salt Lake County is, is a lot of work. You know, talking about these uh, city boundaries and various boundaries that are crossed, there are some unique situations, aren't there, when it does cross county and city boundaries. And there was a unique one uh, involving one of the ski resorts in Utah. So we're going to take a break. We're going to come back in just a second. We're going to tell you the situation involving Powder Mountain. Be right back. The best part about raising children here in, the, in Vernal and the Una Basin is just the smaller community that makes you feel like when you go somewhere, you know everybody. So we packed up our three kids, and here we came to Una County. And what a great place it was. What a great move. Great schools, great outdoor activities. Just a really great place to raise your family. My father, he was an engineer for Chevron, retired 39 some odd years. And Jeff, my husband, it's the same way. He's always worked in the oil gas, always had a job here. And with that industry, when it does good, the whole valley thrives. UNA Basin's been fantastic in supporting what we've tried to do both as a business and also in the development of mountain bike trails and the sport of mountain biking. I'm able to run up to a beautiful place like this and spend some good quality time. It's one of the big reasons why I live where I live. And that makes it just a wonderful place to have little ones like this. In San Rafael country, you'll discover more adventure and excitement than you can imagine. And it's only two hours from the Wasatch Front. Find gorges that descend thousands of feet, trails that go on forever, and the solitude of finding a place all your own. Emory County and the San Rafael Swell. We're closer than you think. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration, CITLA, manages three and a half million acres of Utah lands with the express purpose of providing financial support to further the education of Utah students, while promoting local industry, oil and gas, even residential development, all at the same time. Through the careful use of trust lands, the School Land Trust Program will distribute nearly $37 million to Utah schools this year. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration, building the state's permanent school fund. Well, welcome back, everyone. Before our break, we mentioned something that you saw in Derek's story earlier in the program, a very unique situation involving the Powder Mountain Ski Resort, where one building was in Cache County and the other was in Weber County. So you can imagine the jurisdictional disputes that get set up in that way just because of that unique situation. I would imagine you've had some rather unique experiences with jurisdictional disputes, uh, Reed, probably here in Salt Lake County. Yes, because we have so many many city boundaries that come together in the same place. 
uh, often a property owner or a business owner will be uncertain as to which jurisdiction he is in. And sometimes when you just look at a picture of a map, it's difficult to tell because those boundaries go jog all over the place. And so uh, often we get a phone call and say, where am I or who do I call to uh, complain about my services or where do I get a building permit, where do I, uh, where do I vote? for instance. Uh, those are all tied to the public, all those boundaries are tied to the public land survey system. And so, uh, and just looking at a map sometimes isn't enough if a property is very close to a border. And so, whether it be a voting precinct or a municipal boundary or, or the district boundary, whatever, sometimes we have to actually get in and, and get the legal descriptions and actually go out and determine exactly where the boundary falls so that the, their problems can be solved. Our rural area where our county boundaries are, we only have uh, two sides where we border other counties, or border other counties, uh, Iron County and Kane County, that's on the north and the east. Our other two are state boundaries, so we don't have any encroachment problems there that we're dealing with yet because it's really rural, so. I, I was wondering about that. Yeah, you, you do border Arizona and Nevada. We, we do have boundaries d there we deal with, uh, wilderness areas and other states that come up to our boundaries or in our state that go to their boundaries and state lines determining where they run and it's a important issue we deal with. You ever have conflicts with the other states because of that? We wonder why ours is wilderness and theirs isn't wilderness <laughs> on the other side, so. <laughs> but no, we haven't had any really problem, big problems with states or anything like that. Now, uh, I was just going to say, we've had a, a unique situations at times when you have maybe two cities coming together and a portion of the unincorporated county and there's a law enforcement issue or a, an emergency response issue and we've had we've had people from from the county and both cities you know, whether it be law enforcement or fire show up at the same place thinking that that's theirs to take care of and granted the first thing they do is they solve the the problem take care of the emergency but after that fact they usually will come to us and say okay who's whose responsibility really was this. And so we'll, we, that happens quite frequently in Salt Lake County. Those city boundary issues, you've got three cities in Uinta County though. Is it, yes, we, we do. We have Naples City, Vernal City, and Ballard. Also a portion of Roosevelt City. Uh, Roosevelt City splits the Duchesne and, and Uinta County lines. Uh, the boundary between Duchesne and Uinta County does not long run along one of the section lines, which normally you would expect to see. It's offset from that, and uh, there were some concerns several years ago as to whether that ran in a cardinal direction or whether it was parallel with the section lines, but the two county surveyors working together at that time were able to resolve the issue. Uh, one of the things that uh, is really important is that if the construction people or the design engineers are involved with a, a project where they're going to be uh, destroying a section corner or be cutting through that area, that they contact the county surveyor's office so he can get someone out there and, and take care of the issue. Do they always do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I, I must say in our area, I get several phone calls uh, throughout the summer of people who are trying to comply with, with that and take care of those things. You know, go ahead. I was just going to say, John, in your county, uh, I would think also uh, a lot of times they don't know what they've found when they find it. Oh, because yes. Because you're dealing with sometimes the original stone monuments that were placed mm -hmm. back in the 1850s. Oh, really? And mm -hmm. so they haven't been replaced with modern monuments. And sometimes people come across a stone that's got some notches on it, and they just go, well, this would look good in my fence <laughs> uh, or, or, you know, in my yard or in my garden. So You know, uh, and <laughs> it, it's fun to talk about that. We we find sometimes where there's a, an old brass cap monument in somebody's flower garden or, or this little oh, stone yes. like reeds talked about with the one quarter chiseled on it. And, uh, and, and I know that both, of, both Reed and Ron deal with the same situation. We, we talk about Salt Lake County being a, an area with a lot of population, but there are, uh, there's a lot of area in Salt Lake County that, that is still out in its, its natural uh, state. We still have original stone monuments mm -hmm. in Salt Lake a County lot of in, in areas. Whereabouts? Uh, mostly in the in the outskirts, up in, maybe in the foothills, foothills Kennecott right. property, mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, Immigration Canyon, some of those, some of the canyon areas. There's still a lot of original stone monuments, and, and, we, and we go out and occupy those and get positions on them and and document them and keep those records. 
Now, when you say you occupy them, what does that mean? Uh, we get a GPS uh, location of them. Just set it all up. Survey again. instruments, sur basically. Sur tie survey in. in. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. I bet some of them, I bet, go way back. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mining it's, days. It's yeah. important to keep those monuments in their place, too. Yes. I have a photograph of, in my office of a 1 16th cornerstone, which is somewhat unique. They don't generally set those. And it was set by Charles L. Du Bois in 1875. You're kidding, really? And it's a beautiful monument. You've got a photograph of it. Is the monument still there? It is. It's still in place, and we use it today. But you're not going to tell anybody where it is. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll be back in just a moment after this commercial break, and uh, we'll let our uh, surveyors tell you why they're important to you. Get ready, set, jump. The day starts off at sunrise with the Cisco Disco. Come catch Cisco fish at Cisco Beach on the east side of Bear Lake. After the fishing, why not jump in the lake yourself? The Bear Lake Monster Polar Plunge starts at 11 a.m. at the Bear Lake State Park Arena. All proceeds from the event go to Primary Children's Medical Center. Gather your family and head north for a great cause. Visit bearlake.org for more information. Rich County, take the plunge. How would you spend an extra day in Utah Valley? Stay one more day. Visit utahvalley.com to make reservations. Utah Valley, bring everyone together. Almost 45% of the oil produced in Utah, 7.8 million barrels, comes from Duchesne County. That oil feeds our state economy, provides job growth, and supports local business. Here in Duchesne County, we're working to make Utah an economic, cultural, and technological leader. Whether you're here for business or pleasure, Duchesne County will welcome you with open arms and invite you to explore all the beauty of the Uinta Mountains. Duchesne County, close enough for business, far enough to get away. Cedar City, Utah is home of the Tony Award-winning Utah Shakespeare Festival. But did you know that we also offer a different kind of play? Escape the gray, head south for clear sky. Cedar City, Bryanhead. It's where play is the thing. Welcome back, everyone. As we said just a moment ago, when we were talking about the monuments, you know, those little things that are in the ground, the little round circles, uh, how important they actually are to you in your daily life. And you gave us a good example there just a second ago, Ray. If they get knocked off by just a hair, Yes, well, the, the position of the monument, and it's why we, we protect that position with, you know, vehemently, is because the position of that, nothing takes the place of the position of that monument, not a, not a coordinate, not a, not a GPS reading, the position that it occupies. For instance, I'll give you an example. I've got a utility company out on a road, maybe digging a trench for a water line. They hit a monument, and maybe they, they, don't, they don't understand exactly what it is. They've, maybe they knock it off just a, just a, a few inches. Well now, and then they cover it up and fill their trench in and go about what they do. Now if you think about it, if that monument has moved off that far and now someone goes out and occupies that monument, well, you've introduced an error. And so that error diverges you know, and, get, and grows as you go away from that monument. And now all of a sudden a mile away, someone's fence might be six feet on someone else's property. How deep do they go into the ground? Usually about three feet. Mm -hmm. Frost heave, we get it, the frost heave makes it. Iron post or aluminum mm -hmm. post or something, they usually try and set them deep enough that they'll stay in the same position mm -hmm. like that. And sometimes we'll bury monuments under them, a reference monument under them if it's disturbed or set them off to the side. But the monument is key, keeping it in position. It's the highest thing on the chain of evidence if we need to refer back to. And as we. The chain of evidence, you say. If it goes to court, you know, on boundaries and what you're using to control that stuff, that monument position is the key position. And mm -hmm. we have all this great equipment now, GPS, and we can set all kinds of coordinates on there, but a coordinate is one of the last things that's used is in the chain of evidence to perpetuate position because of all the differences can be introduced into that, the way people do their work. They can 
set up different, have different equipment, and maybe not follow proper procedures, so the coordinates come out different. So the position on the ground is key. Now, everybody seems to have GPSs these days, uh, and one of you mentioned a while ago, a lot of real estate agents take GPSs out. Are those accurate, or what, what happens in those instances when people are doing it themselves? We actually get calls from people asking, I need the coordinates to my property so I can check my corners, and they've got a handheld GPS unit that may be accurate from three meters to 30 meters. And the survey grade equipment we use is, is accurate to millimeters when it's done correctly. And so we don't have coordinates on every piece of property in the counties. They're, they're done by putting an accurate survey to them and tie them to these section corners, the PLSS corners, and, and we can't give out a, a coordinate off a map or something to somebody and let them go out with a handheld unit because mm -hmm. it could be you know, meters off in the distance, and they don't understand that. They think, I've got a GPS unit, I can do my own survey work now, and it's, it's it just not. just doesn't work No, it's way. not anywhere the near that the simple. The difference handheld is that you have, you're only observing a few satellites with a, with a $300 handheld, for instance, and uh, the equipment we use uh, uh, takes, uh, observes a number of satellites, you know, 10. Dual frequencies you know, to check. and frequencies, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and, the, and there's a big difference in the cost of the equipment, of course. It has come a long way, John, since the days of the plumb line you were oh, talking about. Yes, it, it has. We, we talk a lot about these monuments and just measuring coordinates, but the surveyors actually provide a lot of other services, don't they, to the residents of the county? Oh, sure they do. You know, uh, we look at our counties, our taxing come, uh, is set up from, from the base from, of, of the PLSS system. Um, parcels of ground uh, in order to determine the acreage, and their, their position, uh, the accurate tax base there, uh, that's all tied back to what we do. Um, county surveyors can be involved with the numerous uh, items in the county level, uh, municipality boundaries, taxation boundaries, uh, tax sales of property, you know, verifying that the property is actually there, right away location and perpetuation, mm -hmm. utility location and perpetuation, uh, mapping, the GIS mapping that we're getting into, making sure it's set up on an accurate base so it's it's still a pretty picture. It's not accurate to survey grade, but we can make it as accurate as possible if we use a good base layer based on the survey. The public control. land survey system is the base layer for all, for, for basically all mapping. You know, I came into this program myself not knowing much about what the county surveyor actually does. But I've learned a lot in this past 30 minutes, and I thank you gentlemen very much. John Slaw of uh, Uinta County, Ron Whitehead of Washington County, and Reed Demon of Salt Lake County. It's been very interesting. And if you want to know more about the county surveyor and maybe even some of the information that we didn't get into our 30-minute program today, just check our website that you see on the screen here. For the county seat, I'm Terry Wood. Thank you for joining us.